So hey everyone, in this video we are going to implement the feature where the user can contact the owner of the property. Okay, so uh, for this current property, the owner is uh, John Doe and the email is John at the rate email com. So this is just a fake email. So uh, for for now uh, we should be able to uh, send a message to the uh, property owner. So when we log in uh, from this property owner's account, so we should be able to uh, you know see a uh, messages over here like uh, this one. Okay, so and uh, there we need to uh, you know show sh will be. Able to see a message over there uh, along with the name of the user who sent the message and the uh, particular message okay and also we'll be showing the image if there is any okay so uh, we will be implementing this uh, feature and uh, also we need to be logged in okay so if you are not logged in we just need to show a message saying that please log in to contact the owner okay so uh, first of all we just need to create the message model okay within the uh, within our prisma uh, schema okay and then we need to link it to the user model okay so uh, let's go ahead and uh, first create the model to uh, uh, you know receive a message and have all those properties of uh, you know uh, if the message is received or no all that so this video is going to be a uh, slightly interesting and uh, slightly lengthier okay so stick around till the end so that you will uh, know this feature how we can send messages to uh, the owner of the property okay so uh, let us get started so now first let us go to our uh, prisma file and then create a model to uh, receive the messages right so and then link it up to this uh, user model okay so let's go right below the user and create a model for let's call it message okay and then uh, inside this we are going to define various attributes for this message so the first thing is of course the id okay so this will distinguish uh, the different messages uh, based on this id which is going to be integer and we are going to uh, follow the same convention of for every model okay so that is of type integer and again this is going to be of uh, id and by default it is going to auto increment okay so at the rate default auto increment okay so we have already uh, discussed on all the Prisma stuff. So uh, in one of those videos, maybe uh, during the start of the course, so you can just go and check it out. Okay, so uh, this should is this there's an extra bracket. Yeah. So uh, now let's uh, define the actual message itself, which is going to be of type string. Okay, and uh, this is uh, going to be a text area, right? So we just need to override that by uh, at the rate db dot text. Okay. So once you save that, you see that this gets auto, auto formatted uh, by the Prisma extension where, which you have installed. And uh, after this, let's give the property of uh, is read. Okay, so if the uh, message is read or not. Okay, so this is going to be a boolean. So is read and set this to a boolean. And uh, by default, it is going to be false. Okay, so at the rate default and set this to false. All right, so after that, we uh, need to create the created at and updated at. So when was this? Uh, message uh, created and also when it was updated so created at and this is going to be of date time field okay so just as we defined here and by default it is going to be uh, now okay so this will create the timestamp of when the message is actually created and then uh, updated at and also this is going to be of type date time and the type of this is going to be updated at okay so once you save that that gets auto formatted and yeah so only thing is now we just need to link it up to the user and the property okay so uh, basically we are trying to say that uh, which message so which user has uh, sent or received the message and which property is it related to okay so i repeat which uh, user is it uh, which user has sent or received the message and which property does it belong to okay so let us uh, first define the property so for which property are we sending this message so and then set this to the property model itself okay of type property and then we need to set the relation okay so what will be the relation of that so this is going to be like one to one and uh, let's use a relation and then mention the fields so which fields are mapping to what so that is going to the property id okay so Okay, and uh, also we need to define the property ID here. And this is going to be an integer type. Okay, so since the that's the type we used for the ID of the property while creating this mo model. And uh, yeah, so also we need to uh, ref uh, say that which re what it references between within this message model. So that is the ID attribute. Okay, so like this 
and uh, also on delete so it should uh, cascade right so this should say references okay and on delete is cascade so which means that when we uh, delete the property all the related messages should also be deleted right so cascade and yeah so now we just need to go back to the property model and then add in the another attribute for the messages okay so messages and which is going to be uh, of type message and it's going to be an array of that okay so message and an array of messages for this property okay so once we save that uh, yeah so this is the linking is done from the messages to the property so we have told that uh, uh, for this message which all which is related to the property so now so we have actually linked the message to the property model so let us now do the same for the user okay so the user has uh, for the user we need two attributes one is for the uh, sender and the one is for the receiver okay so which is a sender and which is a receiver and uh, let us start with the sender okay and this is going to be of type user okay so the user thing and also we need to define the relation at the rate relation and this is going to uh, since we are having two attributes with the uh, same relation of uh, user table so this needs to be uh, this is actually ambiguous okay so we need to uh, make it unique saying that uh, we can say a string of saying sent messages okay and then we just need to specify the fields so what field does it uh, match to so that is sender id okay so the sender of the sender id relates to this id who is sending the message okay so let us also define that here sender id and references that is to the id okay the message models id and yeah so this sender id is going to be of type int and yeah so let us duplicate the same for the receiver as well okay so okay let's change this to receiver okay so once that's done we just need to go back to the user model and uh, like add in these two uh, attributes over there so sent messages and then the received messages okay so which is going to be of type message an array of that and then the received messages okay so that's done and uh, yeah so actually i forgot to change the uh, uh, name of this so that is received messages all right so with that saved uh, this should so also we need to define the relation here so that is at the rate uh, relation and we need to specify this particular string over here okay so this is what we are matching to okay so since we are um, using two attributes for the same model so we need to have something unique here so that's why this is the way how we can do it so and then let's do the same for the received messages okay so that's done and uh, yeah so looks good so only thing now is we need we just need to migrate the database okay so don't forget this step so this is very crucial otherwise all of your changes you made to this uh, schema will not be affected okay so let us open our terminal and uh, we can just run the following command that is npx prisma migrate dev and hit enter so it will ask you for the name of the migration so we can say uh, message model okay so this will uh, create a new migration and uh, this will be applied okay so also uh, it will automatically generate the uh, prisma thing for you so if it, if it doesn't uh, work you we just need to write in npx prisma generate okay so if any changes didn't apply so if, they, if you find any errors okay so you can just type in this following command so it will uh, generate okay so it will generate on, even on the client side so this is what it means so once that's done we can now start working on the front end and uh, build the contact form so to create the contact form we will be creating a separate component and then we will be uh, uh, embedding inside this uh, another column okay so the reason why we are doing this is uh, we want to keep this component as a server component itself uh, and instead of just for the contact form we do not want to make the entire component as a client component okay so for that we can uh, create another component and mark only that component as uh, use client so let us 
create a component for the contact form let's say contact dot tsx okay so inside this let's sketch our component and uh, let's uh, first use a contact form here just a generic name of contact and now we can go back to the page dot tsx and uh, render this inside another column okay so let's use a column and inside this let's show the contact form so let us auto import the contact component all right so once that's done now also we need to specify the uh, responsive design for this so for extra small screens it has to take the entire width and for medium screen size as i told you we need to show one third of the width for the contact form and the rest is for the property details okay so that is one third is eight and uh, once we save this uh, we can go back and uh, to our application and we see that uh, we have successfully rendered the contact component okay so now let us go ahead and start building the jsx by uh, you know replacing this with the hand design card all right and inside this let's uh, let's render a h3 tag saying contact or uh, with the class name of contact sorry uh, with the class name of margin bottom of one okay just to separate that and saying contact owner okay so with that saved when we go back we should be able to see the card with the name contact owner okay so now we just need to receive the property okay so for which we want to contact the owner so let us receive the property as props okay and uh, let's go back to the page.tsx and pass in the property all right like this and let's define the type for this so property and this is going to be of type the property with images okay all right so once that's done now uh, we can now uh, go ahead and start building this okay so there's an error here saying that okay so since we have also included the um, owner of the property so this is only uh, property with images okay so we need to extend the uh, functionality of this property with images okay so for that we can go to the db and within this index.ts we have defined our uh, custom type that is a property uh, uh, including the image model so we can just uh, duplicate this and do the same for the uh, including the uh, owner of the property okay so we can just say this with property images with images and uh, let's say owner and also let's include the uh, owner and set that to true okay so with that done now uh, once we do that we should go to back to our contact form and replace this property with images and owner okay so yeah so again i'm still getting the same error so within the get property by id so we are including the images as well as owner but still i'm getting this error So I'm not sure about uh, why I'm getting this error for the property. So even though I have defined the user and the, uh, sorry, the owner and the property for that. And uh, let's check this out later. So now let us uh, continue with our contact form. So so right below this uh, contact owner, we can uh, you now dis uh, display a small uh, description component from Andesign. So if I just show you that uh, component, uh, it's right here. So we just want to show the username and then the uh, sorry the email the name of the u user who has created the property and the uh, email of the user okay so it's uh, right here it should be somewhat like this okay so let us uh, import this descriptions component and uh, use the name and the email of the user so descriptions okay and let us uh, we just need to pass in the uh, number of columns so that is we just want one column and not multiple columns and then let's give the class name of margin bottom of 2rem and then uh, we can pass in an items array okay so within this we just need to specify the uh, label and the children for that uh, uh, for that particular description item okay so let us uh, first say the label so this should be an array of objects so let's say label and set that to uh, the owner okay and then the 
email of the owner okay so the sorry the name of the owner that is we write that in children and say property dot owner dot username okay so that's the field that we used within our schema for the name of the owner and also let's uh, display the email of the owner okay so i can just duplicate this and change this to email and let's also change this to email okay so once that's done now we can just uh, close this off okay so if we just go back and uh, just check yeah there we go so we see the owner and the email of that okay so now let us uh, display the form to uh, show the message okay so this just this will be one uh, input text area from and design so let us import form first okay and then let's uh, pass in the form instance so we just need to also create the form instance remember that uh, in one of those videos i explained why we need the form instance so let's create form equals the and design form dot use form okay so this will contain all the different methods like uh, resetting the form and all that okay so it has a bunch of methods so which will be useful for us to use so always we need to create an instance of that and this should this will return an array where the first element is the form instance okay so let's uh, go ahead and let's put the label align to left and then the label call and that is uh, going to span across five different five out of 24 okay so let's span five okay like this so uh, by this you know out of 24 uh, you know the columns it will span five from that and uh, let's give the class name of margin top of one and when we submit this uh, button we call this on finish function okay so which we can for now console log and by saying the values by printing out all the values okay so first we get the values from the as an argument and then we console log the values all right so once this is done we can just uh, close this form and start rendering out our form item okay so the first one is and the first then the only form item is the uh, text item okay so the text field so let us use a form dot item and this is going to have a label of message and let's give the name of message all right so inside that let's render the input dot text area okay so input from andy so where is that So this is going to be uh, self-closing so dot text area so this is not imported I guess that's why uh, what dot text area all right so this will be a self-closing component and once we do that let's finally uh, give a button to submit the form so button from Andy and this is going to be of type primary and once we uh, submit the form so that is HTML sub, uh, type so that is of submit so uh, when we submit this form it should call the submit event handler and then let's give that attribute the prop of block saying that it should take the entire width of the contact form okay so inside the button let's give the label of send all right so once we save this when we go back we should be able to see the uh, form of here okay so give it a refresh so again i forgot to mark this component as use client so now if we refresh this we should be able to see our uh, form item yeah there we go so we see the message box and as well as a button to send okay so we can just type in anything so for now nothing happens when you click on this okay so once i just click on the send if i show you the console so we see that particular message okay inside this object so this has a property called message and then the whatever the value we typed in okay again we just type in anything and you see, get the message of that okay so we just need to uh, leverage this message as well as the logged in particular logged in user 
okay and then uh, make a server action to send the message and also we need to uh, hide this form for unlogged in users okay saying that uh, please log in to send a message and since uh, we are not even logged in we are still showing this form so um, i think this video is running quite long so we will continue this uh, implementation of sending the message and uh, receiving the message from the uh, another user's end and uh, displaying all all of them okay so let us uh, continue all of these in the next video